Hi, John Capobianco here, and uh, this is going to be a masterclass on MCP. I've had some time at home this weekend to really dive in, and I wanted to make an MCP server and client for Selector AI, and I've achieved that. In doing so, I've learned quite a bit about how this is really going to change things and how different it is architecturally um, from the ground up, and how this protocol and how easy it is to plug in other MCPs. We'll get to that point. So this video, excuse me, is going to be part one, an MCP for selectors REST API, an ask selector MCP server and client and Docker file. Very important. Part two, in a different repo altogether, can I make a land graph that incorporates that selector MCP and other MCPs? The whole point of this. Now we're going to go right into Excaladraw here, and this is important. So this is going to be my standalone situation where I have a user who's going to use natural language to talk to an MCP client, and that MCP client is going to return natural language. That MCP client is going to talk to, actually not talk to, what's really interesting is the client, let me make this smaller. Oops. The client is actually going to create its own server dynamically on the fly. Now this is not a REST API. This is, this is um, something different that we're going to get into. But there are no exposed ports. There's no like, you know, port number 8000 or 8080 or whatever. There is none of this. It's using new protocols and a new way of doing things. So dynamically, it's going to look into a Docker file or a Docker container, ideally locally, that we've already compiled, that's going to build the MCP server that's going to contain the tools. It's pretty creepy. It's pretty cool. So here's, say, an MCP client. It's going to spawn a server with the environment variables that it's going to set to run Docker with and then it's going to have some simple things. Send the request, call the tool, interactive mode, so that way we can actually run this as a client. So this client, and you'll see it as a standalone client for its own MCP server. Now the Docker file is a standard Docker file, and in this case it's starting up a Python script. And that's it. I have a health check, but this is just running a Python script when it starts up the container. And that Python script is going to have my selector stuff, my REST API client to selector, the send the response, some monitoring, and it's all using, you can sort of see it here, STD, let me change the color, STD in and STD out, or studio as some people call this, I've heard it called. All right, so there's no open ports or anything, it's sharing memory directly with the client. So what does this mean? This is a nice standalone thing. And this REST server has a single tool, or this MCP server has a tool here, ask selector, which is in itself an abstraction for an API call to the server. Now you don't need to know the body or the structure or anything at all. You just use your natural language and you'll get natural language back. Now what happens next, or if you keep this in mind, right, we can actually build something like this, where I'm gonna have, in my case, a line graph. This could be Pydantic or something different. Let me crank up the zoom on that. All right, so I have a line graph that I'm going to run interactively at a, as a CLI, but I could have a streamlet front end or anything else, right? This, this can run on a traditional port. Now what the LangGraph is going to do, and I'm going to do this freehand, is it's going to have the selector MCP. Selector. It's also going to have some Google Maps. It's going to have Slack. It's going to have GitHub. 
it's going to have uh, some local tools, just some tools I want it to have. It's going to have something called uh, sequential thinking. And I'll just put sequence here. Sequential thinking. And let me just quickly check if there's anything else. GitHub, Google Maps, selector thinking. That's it so far. That's it so far. What I'd like to add, right, because I know there is one, is a net box. And I'll probably get to that tomorrow. I ran out of time today. Right, so net box aside, I don't have that yet. This is my new way of developing applications. Go find the MCP servers. And I'll show you what these look like. So now when, let me change colors here. When the user wants to interface with this land graph, right, they ask a question in natural language into the land graph, the land graph is going to hit the tools that it needs. Let's say first it needs selector. And then it's going to look up the location of the device geographically. Then it wants to send a message to Slack and open up a file in GitHub. Use ping or curl or something. And it wants to do all this with some sequential thinking. Right? We have that same approach that we talked about earlier. Let me do that somewhere else. Let me just move this completely over here. And um, we'll do this in blue, we'll make it thick. We have an assistant, and we have tools, and we have an exit point and a starting point. All right, so we start and we go into the assistant. The assistant iterates with the tools, and eventually we exit. Now, this toolkit, as you see, are those various MCPs, and the MCPs themselves are exposing more tools, or these could be local tools, right? Okay, so let's watch some video footage that I have for everyone. Um, so here's clip zero. This is the standalone MCP server, all right? So... I'm going to build the container, build select MCP, selector MCP. Then I'm going to start the MCP client. This is the MCP client.py file that goes along with the MCP. And it's going to see, you can see here, it's building its own server from the container locally and making the API call to give me my current device health. And there's the answer from selectors rest API. All right now keep, watch this. I'm going to keep going and do some really cool stuff here. Can I get the details of the 10 devices that are failing? Or violating health as a markdown table. All right, so my next question, it has memory. It has a sense of a conversation here. We're going to get this awesome markdown table back. So there we go. Now I'm going to keep going. Can I see the details? I'm actually going to change this up. Can I see the health details for device S3? And I could just keep going and going and going. All right, so this is a standalone MCP client for an MCP server that interfaces with Selector AI's platform. And now I'm going to drill right down into the interface that's failing on S3, it's identified that it's interface issues, why it's failing health, and I'm gonna drill right down into that interface's health, all through natural language, no posts, no bodies, no clicking, no nothing, just natural language. Now video two, now that I have this working as a standalone thing, okay, I'm gonna pause it here. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna let it go. So I'm going through each of the folders that I've got from the Git repos for MCP servers. There's my selector MCP client and server files. We just saw them in action 
as a standalone thing. Well, now I'm going to bring them in and bring in Slack, Sequential Thinking, Google Maps, and GitHub, and a bunch of local tools into a Lang graph. So there's a Lang graph JSON. I have a prompts file that I'm starting prompts in, and it looks like it's spelled wrong. But here we go. So those are the local tools that I'm importing. So we can have local tools. Now here you're going to see me execute different containers. And if we expand these, you're going to see that this is dynamically building a, do a, go a Docker instance. Right? Watch the selector T tool. I'm running Docker here and I'm passing some environment variables along so it's secure and it has the right keys that it needs. So this is all the sub process and it's all using STDIO, STDIN. Now those are the tools and they're all decorated as tools and traceables for my Lang graph. Now these are the various tools that are available from those servers that get spun up dynamically. So the AI invokes a tool, the tool calls to the parent, parent spins up a container which spins up the server which has the tool and then the answer is returned and the container is torn down. Very secure, right? Nothing's lingering, no servers listening and running all the time. Dynamic on the fly. So what else are we going to look at here? Yeah, we're going to try it. So I'm going to show you here, if you do a Docker PS, Docker image LS, excuse me, those are the images that I need to have built before I run this code. Okay, so make sure you build the containers and then you're going to go ahead and just run the code. All right, so we're going to run the Python selector plus and I have a different video for that. So now that we're into the Python selector plus, selector plus I call it, because it's selector plus. So let's just watch some of these examples. All right, so can you please check the device S3 inside selector for its health right please create a report in automate your network repo uh, packet conversations it's funny i don't even mention it as a, 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 a i don't even mention on github it just knows that i mean on github um Please send a Slack message with a summary of uh, device S3 health from selector to channel and then a channel ID. Now I'm still working on it so it can recognize the name of the channel as opposed to a channel ID. Uh, unfortunately, I think it's just a pagination thing and I have too many channels in my professional enterprise Slack room at selector. but. Um, if we identify it directly by name, it does work, or number, uh, uh, unique identifier, it does work, as you'll see. Now, what else we can ask it for? Please use your sequential thinking. And please include any geolocation in information about S3, which is in Atlanta. And I just made that up. When I tie in Netbox, I'll add some geolocation stuff. But let's watch this in action. So it's going to use six thoughts, as we can see, and it's doing the sequential thinking of everything it needs. So it's already invoked an MCP, the sequential thinking MCP. I'm going to highlight it here. So it's actually already started using external tools, the MCP tool, the ask selector tool, and more and more tools. Here's the maps tool, more sequential thinking, it's going to send the message to Slack. It's going to send the message to GitHub. And we're going to get this awesome human report at the end. So there's the message here from the assistant. I've successfully completed the tasks as required. One, device health check. And it's failing with some anomalies. Here's the GitHub report that we get with the details, which is really cool. It actually identifies that it's a possible hardware issue. And then the message in Slack with a link back to that GitHub report if we want it. And um, we're going to look at the tracing next to see what's really going on here. So let's go to the Langsmith tracing. 
and I have a selector plus tracing now and check this out right so we start with the original assistant calling chat GPT and then it goes to the sequential thinking sequential thinking goes to ask selector and then it goes back to sequential thinking and then it gets the map geocode sequential thinking create github report sequential thinking slack post message and then it's done everything that it's been asked to do this took uh, all of 36 seconds to do that analysis and do everything that it did at a cost of about a dollar 25 or about 430,000 tokens um, you can see there are 36 seconds in total. So I'm going to break out of this. And let's just quickly go back. Well, that's not good. Let's quickly go back here. So again, a standalone MCP situation where we have a client with a Docker file and a server and the server does things with tools. In my case, an API call. All right. We've seen some of the code. Now, when we really want to integrate those MCPs, that MCP server that I made can be integrated now with the Ask Selector tool, right? Google has the Geo tool. Slack has the Post Message tool, uh, right? On and on and on. And we just snap in like Lego blocks more and more MCPs. So thank you so much. Um, I'm going to be working hopefully with some customers to see if they want to try this out soon. And I'm also hopefully going to shift and maybe make some public MCPs available for people. I'm going to work on getting the Netbox integrated with this. And uh, I just wanted to share this MCP masterclass because we're moving very, very fast. And I'm very, very excited about the possibilities. So check out the code. It's on my GitHub.